mentioned in the first video where I introduced these end-to-end -end quilting designs, the size of design that you use is dependent upon two things. One is the size of your hoop. You can make it as large as your largest hoop will go. And two, the density of the design that you want in your quilting. So I'm about to quilt using the end-to-end -end designs and I wanna use the bubbles pattern. So I'm just gonna come over here to my bubbles and my hoop is 11 and 13 sixteenths, almost 12 by eight, all right? We'll, we'll call it 12 by eight. So in this hoop, I could get an eight by 12 horizontal and if I pull it over into it, well, that one would need to be turned. So I will just highlight this and let me rotate it. So this is going to make a very large quilting design. It will fill up the hoop and it will do it in a single pass. But I want something a little bit denser than this. And so making sure that this is highlighted, I'm just gonna hit delete on my keyboard and make it go away. Let's go with the five by seven vertical. I'll pull this in. And now I can get more than one of these in the hoop. So I'm going to pull it over here and I can either pull it in again or seeing as it is already highlighted over here in the objects panel, I'm going to go right click and copy and right click and paste. And you can see there's two of them over here now in the objects panel. One is highlighted and one is not. The one that is highlighted is sitting directly on top of the first one. So I'm just gonna use my arrow keys and I'm gonna move it over. You can either do this by the mouse or you can just do it with the arrow keys. And what you wanna look for now, I'm gonna roll in on my scrolling wheel on the mouse, or you can get larger by dragging this right here, this uh, arrow. So what I want to do is, you can tell which one is highlighted because this is in shadow and this one is highlighted. I want to move this, I could grab this and move it just like that. There we go. Now I'm going to back out. Now, when these stitch like this, what's going to happen is when you do this, it will start over on the left and run its path. And then when it gets to where the two patterns meet, it will do a little forward backwards stitch without any kind of tie off and keep going without any tails or knots. It's just going to do a stitch one, two, three, and then it's gonna start up again. So you will have an extra stitch or two thickness right here, and that's it. Now, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna do control A, which is, stands for all, and that selects everything. I'm gonna minim, I'm gonna um, shrink these just a little bit, just makes it easier. And I'm going to go to, uh, while I'm here, I'm going to hit preferred for my thread. It knows it's isochord. I don't want it to stop. So I'm just going to hit one color and it wants to know what color. And it doesn't matter because I'm going to make the whole thing white, but I'm just going to choose one color, double click that. And so now it won't stop in between. It's just going to keep going because it doesn't, it knows now it doesn't have a color change. So that's an easy way to do that. And now I want to control A again. And if you don't want to control A, you can put your cursor up here and drag it. Let me get a little smaller. You can grab it and highlight them all. And then come over here to this icon in the, in the gray menu bar. And this is center designs in the hoop. And just click that. So I like this. Now what I'm going to do is I want to, to print this out onto my print and stick target paper. And the easiest way to do that 
is to just come up here and go file. And I want to go to print preview. In some of the larger designs, it'll end up printing on two different sheets because it won't all fit on one sheet. So this is where you can check to see how many pages it's going to have. It looks like it's just going to have one. Let me see if I click this, right? So this little button up here is your toggle for your two page display. You will have the design on one page and your page two down here is your thread changes or your thread sheet. And uh, I don't need that because I know everything is going to be in white. So I'm only going to print the first page and that's it. So I'm just going to hit print. And it, I already have my printer mapped, of course, and I'm going to go instead of all because I don't want page two. I'm just going to hit pages and I'm going to it says one and I'm going to hit one and then click OK. I'm not going to do that now because I've already printed it out. But that's how you print just the one page. And I recommend that if you are using print and stick target paper, go ahead and, and print it on regular paper first, just to be sure everything is going to print out the way you think it is. And then use your print and stick target paper after that. So I'm going to hit cancel. And now what I want to do is save it to my thumb drive. So I'm going to come back up here to the menu and click on file. And I'm going to say save stitch file as. And there is my USB. If you want to navigate to that by hitting this drop down arrow in the save in menu. So I'm saving it here and I'm going to come down. Let me move this up out of that so it's easier to see. I'm going to call it bubbles five by seven dash two. So that tells me there's two passes of the five by seven bubbles in this particular design. And I'm going to make sure that, see, this is the nice thing about in brilliance. It works with every kind of home embroidery machine. You just need to uh, find your machine's file type that it uses and highlight that and make sure it's on the one that you need and then click save. So you can save this to your computer or you can save it to your thumb drive. So I am ready to go now and take this over to the machine and stitch it out.